the group exhibit um, Hydrogen Fuel Cells Batteries at the Hanover Fair 2017. Please have a seat, help yourself with some coffee and drinks, it's uh, on the house. Um, my name is Muriel Boakas and I would like to welcome Dr. Uwe Borup from um, Neil Technol Hydrogen Solutions, uh, Vice President, President Technologies. He will talk today about uh, integrated hydrogen production and fueling solutions for heavy-duty vehicles. Um, I hope you enjoy the presentations and I'm looking forward to some questions later. Stay, stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thank you and welcome everybody. Um, I'm Uffe Borup and I'm with uh, Nell Hydrogen Solutions. I'll talk to you about heavy-duty and heavy-duty fueling um, and how we uh, uh, go about that. So um, there we go. So um, I'm not. I don't know if you are familiar with Nell Hydrogen. We have uh, we have around 100 people in a Norway uh, and Danish um, company, uh, actually covering the whole um, range from hydrogen production, electrolyzers. We have the fueling equipment. And also, we are offering to work with the customers to build solutions around this, whether it's for, for car fleets, uh, fueling networks, or heavy duty. On the electrolyzer side, um, we have uh, alkaline electrolyzer as the base module, and we can offer that both in a containerized solution up to around 600 kilogram per day production, or in factory based uh, solutions, which more or less unlimited. We have a, a nice uh, presentation at our booth on, on B60, where we're showing a 400 megawatt uh, electrolyzer solution. So, uh, so basically, any kind of production need you have on the hydrogen side is what we offer. And um, if we look at the fueling side, um, this is our new factory. We will be able to produce up to 300 stations per year. And we have this station here, which is um, today already produced in uh, significant numbers for car fueling, where we have up to 200 kilogram per day capacity. But we will use uh, similar technology, uh, we're using similar technology for the heavy duty and can actually have in a very compact system with up to 1,000 kilogram per day uh, uh, compression and cooling for, uh, for, uh, for the fueling side. And then uh, the dispenser. Uh, is available uh, both for car fueling 700 bar and for heavy duty at 350 bar. Um, we also are uh, heavily involved in our solution uh, offering, which uh, includes uh, fueling networks where we have worked together with several partners to build network of uh, hydrogen stations for car fueling. Um, and also this same kind of concept can be applied for heavy-duty vehicles for captive fleets. That's what we see normally for buses and stuff like this. If we have 10, 20, 30 buses, uh, we can help uh, build the entire supply chain of the hydrogen uh, uh, from the electricity coming in until the hydrogen dispensed on the, on the dispenser. Um, so why, why is that coming now? That we're basically seeing three major trends. One is that the renewable energy is getting really cheap and competitive. So, uh, and on top of that, it also starts to create a challenge for communities to integrate uh, the renewable energy. Uh, we see in, in areas where we have a very high portion that actually the, the spot price of electricity is going towards zero. And that is, a, of course, a challenge, but it's also an opportunity to convert this into a, um, a valuable fuel that we can put into a fleet of buses and cars. The hydrogen cars and, and vehicles are starting to become available. We see uh, in, in California uh, thousands of cars now driving around, and we also expect that we'll see that in Asia and, and Europe uh, in the coming years. 
Uh, and um, back to the point about the local economy, actually it's very attractive to start integrating hydrogen into these other power sectors. Um, yeah, in California, you can actually have these cars very affordable, less than 400 uh, US dollars per month for the lease. That's quite attractive. And there is a number of cars coming uh, um, in the years ahead. What, uh, what our point really is at this fair is that we say hydrogen now actually can be made uh, fossil at fossil parity. So the hydrogen, if you produce it in significant volume, we can now provide the hydrogen competitive to uh, fossil fu uh, fuels like diesel and gasoline. Um, it, it's all the majority of the cost in the hydrogen is back to the electricity cost. And what we see in Norway, actually in the grid already today, the cost in the, in the grid power is, is uh, below four cents, which means we can produce hydrogen um, uh, below five, uh, five euro per kilogram at the dispenser. In Europe, um, we have the same opportunity with the windmills and solar systems. And the same thing in US. Uh, in US, the taxes on the gasoline is lower, so it'll take us a little bit longer to get there. But there's no doubt with the dropping prices on the, on the renewable energy that uh, we'll be there uh, very soon. Um, and, and basically, um, the, the miracle in the renewable energy sector means that we have these learning curves on wind and solar that, that means that it will continue to come down. And, um, and actually, what we see is that uh, in large scale, we can actually get to two euros per kilogram in bulk, uh, bulk production of hydrogen. Um, here's just some pictures of the different vehicles that we can fuel, both from around one kilogram in the fueling storage to five kilogram, 30 kilogram. This is 180 kilogram. This is 100 kilogram. This may be four, five, four, uh, four or 500 kilogram. And all these uh, vehicles, they, uh, they can use hydrogen as a replacement for the diesel, uh, diesel fuels. And, um, and getting the setup right so that we can get affordable hydrogen into this vehicle will be a huge enabler for this industry to take off. Um, there we go. Fuel cell buses. We see uh, in Asia there's a lot of uh, things happening on fuel cell buses, but also in Europe we now have uh, EU funded programs up to the first 500 buses that will be installed here over the next uh, two to three years. And actually what we expect that after that, the manufacturers, they will be able to offer these uh, buses on a competitive basis. If you look at the city who wants to have a, a zero emission bus fleet, these fuel cell buses will be very attractive for, for the buses. And the great thing about the fuel cell bus is that it can actually be operated in the same way as you do the diesel bus today. So it's very easy for cities to roll this out. The cost has been too high in the past, but we see very clear signs that this price level is coming down. And uh, if you order buses in volumes, you will start to, to get some, uh, some very interesting uh, price levels on this. Uh, also, in, in heavy duty for, uh, for trucks, this is uh, Nicola from, uh, from US, building a truck with a 1,200 mile range on hydrogen and batteries. And we have Alstrom uh, bringing out their train, uh, hydrogen train, which is now in test. And uh, there's a lot of, lot of activities going around the train that will be rolled out over the next uh, couple of years. And of course, the fueling infrastructure for this has to be in place because these uh, infrastructure things, they need to be more or less 100% availability uh, from the fueling side. Otherwise, uh, operators, they cannot uh, uh, do their, their daily operation. This is the first uh, bus fueling station that we built in 2014. Uh, it's a 35, uh, uh, 350 bar um, output pressure. We can fuel the buses around seven to 10 minutes. Um, and this station here has a capacity around 400 kilogram per day, uh, which fits pretty well with a bus fleet of 10 buses. So this is kind of the early, early stage uh, demonstration. And the bus uh, fueling station is very reliable, uh, which is in Antwerp in Belgium. Um, we also have these combination uh, solutions where we can uh, integrate heavy-duty fueling for trucks together with car fueling and truck fueling. This is a specific project that we are building in, uh, in Norway, right, uh, right 
this year we'll be uh, have that up and running for uh, together with ASCO in uh, Trondheim. And if we look a little bit uh, higher capacity, then actually here's an integrated uh, solution for around 2,000 kilograms per day, where we can use our electrolyzers here with a 2 plus 1 uh, redundancy, so we have very high availability of the hydrogen. Um, we can put a storage here so that uh, uh, the production unit can run over the day and adapt to the renewable in, uh, input and then have a redundant uh, fueling system with uh, multiple compressors on the output. And basically what we see is that if, if you put in affordable uh, renewable energy in the, on the input, on this kind of scale here you can get to around three and a half uh, euro uh, from the production side and actually fueled you end up around five euro per kilogram in, uh, in a European setting, and that means it's fully competitive with uh, the with diesel uh, supply chain. Uh, with redundancy, which will make this one very available, so that actually you can rely on it with your bus fleet or your, tr your train fleet. And this is just a little overview of how it looks, around 700 square meter, um, and it's actually very scalable, so we can go from 10 buses up to 200 buses. Uh, this kind of system. Um, here's a little bit bigger one, 50 megawatt, just to get to the point. Heavy duty, we can get to 5 euro per kilogram, uh, which make it competitive uh, with uh, your diesel fuel. Um, I thank you for your attention. We are down in booth uh, number B60, just down the road here. You're welcome to come and, uh, and see us for further discussions. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much for your presentation. Are there further questions right now? Anything you want to know? If you use uh, 700 bars for filling for a car, the car actually is 700 bars. How much pressure over that? 900 bars or 850? Yeah, so, so our uh, fueling storage is around 950 bar. So, uh, so there will be extra, of course, we need some extra pressure to, uh, to ensure that the end, end pressure is uh, 700 or even a bit more because the gas will heat up. So um, end pressure may be 750 or something. And uh, 5 euros per kilogram are excluding taxes, I suppose? Yeah, that's excluding taxes, yes. Yeah, so. Okay. So, thank you. Thank you for the questions. If not, as are already announced by Dr. Uwe Borup, you can see them later at the booth. Uh, thank you very much again. One more warm applause for him. Thank you. And we will continue with the next <laughs> presentation in a few minutes at 1 p.m. It will be uh, Wolfgang Chen from uh, Palkan Energy Corporation. And he will talk about the methanol reforming fuel cell system in Chinese market. Looking forward to this. Thank you.